the Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina Rolf Arkison. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topic news, one month now since the deadly superstorm Dorian battered Grand Bahama and recovery and restoration efforts continue. Tonight, the Minister of State for Grand Bahama says, bit by bit, this island is coming back together. And he is optimistic that the new disaster management ministry will help to drive a speedy recovery. Our Megan Shepard has our top story. The island of Grand Bahama, particularly the city of Freeport, is making its rebound slowly but surely. Businesses are reopening their doors every day and families continue to rebuild. However, the East End community is still in shambles one month post-Hurricane Dorian. Minister of State for Grand Bahama, Senator the Honorable Kwesi Thompson, noting that he is very aware that that community needs to be cleaned up immediately. He says he is very confident in the level of expertise the new Minister of Disaster Preparedness Management and Reconstruction, the Honorable Iram Lewis, will bring to the process. Ongoing now. Uh, they are putting together those uh, those plans with respect to the cleanup, uh, and we expect that the new minister, uh, who is in the process now of reconstructing NEMA, he's in the process now of building his team in NEMA, and he is, is going to, as soon as possible, be able to get on the ground in East End and going to be able to bring the, the, the needed assistance to those persons in East End. So we have confidence that with uh, putting in place this new ministry and putting in place the technical assistance that's needed that we will then begin to see particularly that cleanup going but not just the cleanup but we're going to be able to see the whole reconstruction of that area in East End. He says despite this being a difficult time for Bahamians it will be used as an opportunity to provide jobs on both Grand Bahama and the island of Abaco. While we've seen unfortunately some of the businesses have let go persons on one end I believe we will also see that there's going to be an uptick, particularly in the construction. There's going to be an uptick in cleanup. There's going to be an, an uptick, uptick in those areas like East End that is going to really need the, uh, the cleanup. So I believe that uh, with the addition of Minister Lewis, that he is going to be able to organize. He's going to be able to uh, not, you, not uh, be limited by red tape, but he's going to be able to immediately be able to provide the assistance to those persons on the ground, particularly in the East End area. The minister also expressing optimism about continued investor confidence. He notes that two major companies, Carnival and Royal Caribbean, continue to display their confidence in this island. I'm pleased that uh, this week uh, we attended uh, meetings with Royal Caribbean and ITM and those talks continue to go very smoothly. Uh, they have again said to us that not only do we want to continue with the development, but we actually want to accelerate uh, the talks uh, so that they can move forward to the closing. So those talks continue, I think, to progress. Uh, in some other instances, we've seen uh, the, the same amount of, of investor uh, confidence. Those persons the same way at Carnival and Royal Caribbean have said that they uh, want to continue their uh, investment plans. We've seen that with other investments as well. So again, we're pleased in terms of the investment side of it. Um, there are some things that we are continuing to work on in terms of making sure that we rebuild with uh, resilience. And that's one of the things that we have to show to the uh, investment community. He says he also met with the Grand Bahama Tech Hub Committee this week as well. The Tech Hub Committee is uh, focused on not just seeing the hurricane as an, obst as an obstacle, but they focus on really seeing the hurricane as an opportunity. And so we will, you see that you have a number of businesses and residents that need to rebuild. And so our opportunity is to assist, encourage, uh, and, and to push businesses to rebuild build with the latest technology. It is also to assist residents when they think about rebuilding, uh, about rebuilding as smart homes. Uh, East End provides a huge opportunity for us because it's it's almost like a, a, a blank slate where uh, you really could look at, at building uh, a smart city. Uh, you could look at renewable energies when it comes to uh, the power supply. Uh, and so the, the Tech Hub, I think, committee is uh, as dedicated as they were before. 
Megan Shepard, CNS Network News. Thanks, Megan. Meantime, the nation's leader is expected on Grand Bahama this weekend to assess recovery efforts on this island. Yesterday, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis led a delegation of cabinet ministers to Abaco to take a look at recovery and reconstruction efforts on that island, including security manpower. Minnis left for Abaco shortly after delivering the first in a series of communications in Parliament on the progress of recovery in the wake of Hurricane Dorian. Now, the delegation visited Marsh Harbor and Treasure key before returning to the capital today. Also from Abaco, Water and Sewage Corporation has authorized Marsh Harbor operations to restore water supply to the government clinic, the Abaco Beach Inn, the government administration complex, Marsh Harbor International Airport, and the primary school in Central Pines. In other news, due to the extensive damage caused by Hurricane Dorian to the airport's infrastructure, operations are still limited and officials are not clear as to when they will return to a state of normalcy. This results in a loss for the economy as it relates to facilitating tourism and trade. Our Amico Knowles met with a chief of the Pelican Bay Hotel to find out how they're managing during such a difficult time. General Manager of the Pelican Bay Hotel, Magnus Alnebeck, says the non-operational airport terminal is a threat to the economy of Grand Bahama. He says without a functioning airport, the Freeport model is not going to work. The hotelier is adamant that the current practice of persons traveling through Nassau to get to Grand Bahama just isn't sustainable. The airport is owned 50% by the families behind the, the the port group limited or as we call it the port authority and the other 50 percent by Hutchinson and and I think it's an it's an ownership issue they they need to get this airport back up and running or they need to say we are not going to get it up and running and then somebody else needs to step in I think you know that is really important at this point in time is that the airport gets going Alnebeck says the hotel did incur damage due to the storm. However, the establishment remains open. Now, with the international airport being closed, tourists traveling to the island are little to none. He says the only person staying at the hotel are those coming to the island on private planes to provide relief assistance and essential services. So we don't have any tourists. I mean, it's, I don't think there are any tourists in Grand Bahama. These are people who are coming here and who are helping us getting this place back on, on their feet, on, on our our feet and obviously they understand the circumstances involved in getting here so the people are coming here are either coming by private charter or, or they are going through Nassau and whilst many persons are out of work the staff of Pelican Bay were told they can return once the all clear was given we will have work for you to do so come to work as quick as you can unless you're dealing with an emergency in your home come to work and if the problem is that you can't come to work because you have nobody to look after your children, bring your children with you. We'll take care of them. So we set up a little temporary childcare facility for those ladies in particular who came in with their kids to start cleaning up the hotel. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, we were ready to reopen the same day as the storm was over. Alna Beck says it is something that their employees appreciate. Ramiko Knowles, ZNS Network News. The Grand Bahama Airport Company threw a press statement noting that airlift from international markets is still weeks away. Officials say due to the extensive damage to the infrastructure, airport operations are still limited to daylight and visual flight rules. But they are prioritizing repairs to the flight safety operations and navigational aids to extend the operating hours of the airport beyond clear weather and daylight hours. The next phase will be restoring the airport's capabilities to accept and clear direct flights from the United States. Airport officials say it will require significant repairs, but they are hoping to have direct flights to and from Fort Lauderdale by the middle of November, subject to approval by the U.S. Transportation Security Administration. Now, international flights from countries other than the U.S. can be accommodated today with advance notice, as arrivals will be processed on-site and outbound clearance will be handled off-site prior to departure.
While the remaining shelter is left open since the passage of Hurricane Dorian officially closed today. Social workers helping with that transition. And as Jamila Mizek tells us, those leaving the shelters today are from the storm ravaged East Grand Bahama area. For weeks, the St. George's Gymnasium served as a shelter for displaced residents, but now they have to find other living arrangements as the Ministry of Education works to reopen schools soon. Assistant Director of Social Services, Paula Marshall, says thanks to a kind gesture, five of those families from the East staying at the gym now have some place to stay. We have to commend the people in the East End for looking out for their own. Um, Preston Cooper and his church members have agreed to accommodate persons from the East End at, a sh at an auditorium in Freetown and they are going to take care of their needs. Um, Neva is helping them with the donations that they requested but the, pri the shelter is a private one because um, we are now moving in terms of recovery and reconstruction so we will not be um, continuing shelters at this time. So we are moving into helping people set up their lives. Now we spoke to Homes Rock resident Dexter Carter who says he was staying in the shelter for about three weeks. He says his roof was compromised and unfortunately with nowhere else to stay, he has to return to his home. He's hoping to get some assistance. Well, I came to the shelter uh, just a little after Dorian. I was, this is the third shelter that I've been to. Uh, we was at the, the first shelter I was at was down there in uh, 8 Mile Rock Sea Grape, the Church of God of Prophecy. And while there, uh, the rain was raining and stuff like that and water started coming in. And so we were trying forward from that uh, shelter, the Church of God of Prophecy in Sea Grape, and we went to the Better Deliverance Center right there up in Jonestown area. And then after that, uh, I went up to the, they give the clearance for everybody that they can leave. I even tried to explain my condition there, but that didn't go anywhere. I had to go back to uh, where I was there in Homes Rock, that same building. Now Marshall says social services has been focusing on helping displaced residents with rent assistance. We have made the offer to um, persons who have been displaced that the government is prepared to assist them with rent assistance. And so some persons have taken advantage of that and we are assisting them as best as we can. Uh, we also made an appeal to landlords so that they can uh, work with the government and provide rent for three months um, as opposed to first, last, and security to accommodate these persons, which would give them an opportunity to do what they can to um, stabilize their lives, whether it's going back home or elsewhere. She says so far, feedback from landlords have been encouraging and quite a few are working with them. Jamila Mizik, Sadness Network News. As many throughout Grand Bahama try to return to a state of normalcy, students at the University of the Bahamas are now into their first week of school since the passing of Hurricane Dorian. But despite a late start this semester in dealing with the emotional effects of this dangerous storm, more than half the student population has returned to continue their studies. Despite Hurricane Dorian's impact on the University of the Bahamas Northern Campus, officials have made the decision to reconvene the semester. One month after the original start date, the offices are now opened at the Teachers Cooperative Credit Union building on West Atlantic Drive. Lecturers are in place and the classes are running between the Teachers Credit Union building and Bishop Michael Eldon School. Vice President Dr. Ian Strawn says it's enough for them to celebrate. As he says, surprisingly, an overwhelming number of students have returned. We're still crunching the numbers, but we can tell you that we had around 530 to start the semester, which was an increase on the year before. And we know that about 50 went to Hampton University, about another 50 or just less than that went to Nassau and are in classes there. And so we knew that we were working with just over 400 that we could have. Um, we're still, like, as I said, fine-tuning the numbers, but from what I'm hearing from faculty and what I'm observing myself, I think we're landing somewhere between 70 to 80 percent of that number, which is, I was prepared to deal with 50 percent, but um, more have come and we're just overjoyed. And he says this speaks to the resilience of the students and their desire to continue their education. Having this to do is, is its own kind of therapy, having, um, you know, having your mind occupied on study is a good thing. Um, and two, you know, a lot of those graduating seniors, they don't want to be 
behind. They want to graduate in May. We want them to graduate in May. And so I've really been inspired by their commitment to come back and re-engage the institution. So. Uh while the campus sustained major damage, he says the structure still seems to be sound. However, those who are living in the residence hall had to be relocated. Residence hall sustained serious damage. So we are no longer able to house students on campus, but we've been able to partner with a uh, private uh, holding and we've found housing for students who returned from Hawksville Hall and some additional students who were displaced because of the storm. Students who are not living on the dorms but were displaced also received assistance. The government has been um, really supportive. You might know that we had a tertiary grant program which was giving anyone with 12 credits free tuition and that there was also um, support for any student who had to travel from one island to the next for housing. Well, the government has agreed that if you are a Grand Bahamian student that attends UB but you have lost your home, well, they will also provide that support to you. So that's huge. So we have a number of students who are going to be taking advantage of that. And I think that's a really, really important gesture in this moment to support them as they try to get an education. Stay with us. Our extensive coverage of Dorian, the aftermath, continues in just a moment.